good afternoon respected all first of all respected dr khan sir dr aisha shamsi madam dr aisha bhosle madam dr motiwala sir and our whole management and principal dr joshi madam who to whom we owe to the whole part of today's opportunity of giving the online webinar well without whom we could not do it and it was the students so i thankfully and very very affectionately call my dear students thank you very much for coming here today and for joining this webinar we start now with our webinar and the name of this today's topic is the pioneers in homeopathy and the contributions in homeopathy pharmacy let us begin with who is a pioneer a pioneer is a person or a group that originates or helps open a new line of thought or activity or a new method or technical development well all of us know the example of the great legend neil armstrong he was the first person to put the human foot upon the lunar soil he was a pioneer he did something originating let us see who are the pioneers in the homeopathic pharmacy as all of us know students that we have a topic as per the national curriculum that pioneers in homeopathic homeopathic pharmacy should be studied in detail so let us take this topic in details without saying our first pioneer is our master dr christian frederick samuel hanuman you know that dr hanuman practiced medicine but was thoroughly dissatisfied thereby he renounced the medical practice he was a great flair for the language and he took up the translation that is cunin's materia medica he came across upon the fever producing property of cinchona in the cunin's materia medica well this is history we know he discovered homeopathy based on similia similibus curenta he is the founder of homeopathy he wrote organon of medicine materia medica pura and conducted various proofs he also published a very important book called as fragmenta divirbus medicamentorum positivus sive insano corporo humano observatus and your students you know it was published in two volumes which contained the health effects of 27 drugs in common use as recorded in the medical literature along with dr hanuman's own observation because he took the drugs by himself and that was where he gave the birth to the drug proving these were the medicinal substances whose pure pathogenic action he had ascertained by experiments not only on himself but his family and few friends so this was about the fragmenta divirbus medicamentorum positivus sine insano corporo humano observatus now we see the second important pioneer there were many pioneers in homeopathic pharmacy it is really difficult to enlist them but still out of which we have tried to choose and give the most appropriate ones dr karl w kaspari you know that he was the first person who gave us the homeopathic pharmacopoeia information thereby he was the father of homeopathic pharmacopoeia he believed that surgery and medicine need no longer be divided but that with the aid of homeopathy surgical diseases could be more successfully treated look students during those days he thought that yes only with the help of homeopathy we could treat the surgical diseases now he prepared his dispensatory there is a difference between dispensary and dispensatory what is dispensatory it is a book for or a medicinal formulary which contains a systematic description of the drugs and preparations used in medicine and they have been put together into the homeopathic pharmacopoeia this is the book that is dr kaspari in 1825 he published in leipzig dispensatory of homeopathic pharmacopoeia next now we see the contribution of dr constantin herring all of us know he was one of the pioneers of homeopathy in the united states of america 
she devoted much to the study of the cures, especially for the venomous serpents, and also a great work on hydrophobia. All of us know what is hydrophobia, hmm? fear of water. And he developed many Hahnemann's theories. Later, Herring was treated for a dissecting wound with the homeopathic remedy arsenicum album. It was the white arsenic or the arsenic dioxide, and the finger was safe, further provoking his interest. Well, students, all of us know that he is also known for the famous Herring's law of cure, the order of healing from top to bottom, from within out, from important organs to less important organs, right? So Herring's contribution as especially was very important in terms of healing. He also invented decimal scale. And you know that it is put it in the form of X. Herring's law of cure, along with that, he also provided lattices because he proved lattices, right? The Bushmaster or the lattices, trigonocephalus. Dr. Ernest Starr, he was the person who converted to homeopathy. He became a pupil of Samuel Hahnemann. And also, he was a member of Hahnemann's Brewers Union. I told you that Dr. Hahnemann gave birth to drug brewing as well. He was a master by his own. So while doing this, he had a Brewers Union. And Dr. Staff, he became the pupil of Dr. Johan uh, Ernest Staff. He became the pupil of Dr. Hahnemann's Brewers Union. There was a separate Brewers Union those days. He was also a pioneer in homeopathic therapeutics. It was reported that he used olfaction. All of us know that what is pharmacognomy? The ways in which a homeopathic medicine is administered. So olfaction was appropriately given by Dr. Staff. He commenced his studies of the higher potencies in 1843 and published the results. Yes, without forgetting the Staff's process, we have learned the purification of the sugar of milk. First year students, it is a must to know what is staff process. Where one pound of crystals of commercial lactose is dissolved in four pounds of boiling distilled water. The solution is filtered when it is warm. The filtrate is then thoroughly mixed with four pounds of absolute alcohol. And the whole vessel is tightly kept closed and kept aside so that the sugar may crystallize. After three to four days, a thin layer is seen settling at the bottom of the vessel. This crystallized mark is collected and washed in the distilled water to which some alcohol is already added. And these crystals now, after, will be forming the purified crystals of sugar of milk, which we use. We come to the next pioneer in the homeopathic pharmacy. His name is Dr. Pierre Schmidt. Dr. Pierre Schmidt, he also was a Swiss Orthodox physician. LM scale, yes, without forgetting LM scale. We should never forget that this name was given by Dr. Pierre Schmidt of Geneva. Potencies prepared under this method were named by Dr. Schmidt as 50 millisimal potencies, right? So Pierre Schmidt called these potencies as a 50 millisimal potency. Also, Dr. Hahnemann, our master, termed this as renewed dynamization. We come on to the next contributor towards homeopathic pharmacy, and that is Dr. Stuart Close. His contributions, the guidelines regarding law of minimum dose is written in his famous publication, The Genius of Homeopathy. It's a compiled work of lectures and essays on homeopathic philosophy. Dr. Richard Hughes, our next contributor and pioneer, where he wrote in 1867, the Manual of Pharmacodynamics and Manual of Therapeutics. He was also appointed as the permanent secretary of the organization of the International Congress of the Homeopathic Physicians in Philadelphia. Well, students, you must read this book as a part of Manual of Therapeutics. He has written beautiful pharmacodynamics, and all the details of the drug proving are given by Dr. Hughes in this manual. Dr. William Gorick, our next pioneer, he was a co-founder of the Pacific Homeopathic Medical College and the Hahnemann Hospital in 1881. His pocket manual finds its way almost every homeopath's library. 
because it is quite concise and a guide to hundreds of remedies, some of which appear nowhere else. Dr. William Borick. This is his pocketbook. And Bhattacharya. Well, Mahesh Chandra Bhattacharya was born on 1st of December 1958 uh, in West Bengal. And he was a pioneer in Indian homeopathy. Well, this particular pharmacy, N. Bhattacharya, was founded in 1889. He was a philanthropist as well. And he basically published four books for the homeopathic treatments in Bengali, in English, and other Indian languages. This is his pharmacological unit. M. Bhattacharya and Company. It is actually like this. We go on to the next contributor, Dr. William Burt. Well, Dr. William Burt was responsible for the actual proving of nearly 30 remedies. He really did this with crude doses, right? Burt's provings are some of them are Esculus, Baptisium, Cactus, Colophyllum. Dioscoria, Collinsonia, Hybristus canadensis, Leptrandra virginica, Pulsitila, etc. He was the first person who advised not to avoid, I mean, we need, must avoid the blue colored bottle. Rather, we must not preserve any mother tincture or any dynamic uh, drugs, whatever we are preparing in the potentized form, they will not be preserved in blue colored bottles. This is a very, very important thing. Dear students, you must remember, because this is all written in the preservation of homeopathic mother tinctures and potentized medicines. Therefore, avoid blue colored container, as blue color has some dynamic effects injurious to the drugs. Therefore, this dictum was given by Dr. Burt. Dr. Wilma Schwab. Of course, he was one of the pioneers in homeopathy. He was very much dissatisfied during those situations where basically he wanted to make the standards in a qualitized manner. Therefore, he was the first person who set up the production of homeopathic medicines. In 1866, two years after his qualification as a pharmacist, he founded his own company. And this was named after Dr. Wilma Schwab. He also founded a publishing house specializing in literature for both the medical profession and the public. This was very important step, a giant step for the preparation of the manufacturing unit. This basically a quote has been devoted to him that in his language, I have founded an institution of my own which examines every homeopathic remedy for its genuineness and purity, and which sets standards for its quantity, the content, effectiveness, and characteristics of the substances. So this was an image which we could make you see regarding Dr. Wilma Schwab. This is the actual unit, which is in Germany, the first homeopathic manufacturing unit. Now, without forgetting our ancient contributors, though they were not directly uh, you know, related with that of homeopathic pharmacy, but definitely gallon paracelsus also have a very important contribution towards homeopathic pharmacy. As we all know, he was the originator for the crude medicines. Therefore, gallon somewhere in 130 to 280, he was an experimenter in drug compounding during those periods. And his principles of preparing and compounding the medicines ruled in the Western world for more than 1,500 years. He also described, we know Galenical Pharmacy, we know the branches of homeopathic pharmacy, right? So Galen described various methods of extracting the crude drugs for the first time, and hence, he was called as the father of Galenical pharmacy. Let's not forget the contributions of Paracelsus in the 16th century pharmacology pioneer. Paracelsus claimed that reduced doses of what makes a man ill 
also cures him. So this was the basic principle of homeopathy as well, which is based on the idea that light cures light. And practitioners believe that a substance that triggers a certain illness can also be used to treat that illness. It was well known even during those times. And of course, it was proved by our master, Dr. Hanuman. The principle of homeopathy was developed and expanded by the German physician, of course, our master, on the law of similars. Hippocrates, he was the person who formulated what was legitimately considered as one of the fundamental rules of therapy. Nature is the primary physician, and that is the first duty. We all know what is the Hippocratic Oath, right? So he was the person who named pieces as that of the you know, healer of disease, nature, the healer of disease, right? So this was Hippocrates. Now we come back again to the homeopathic field, that is Dr. Ernest Albert Farrington. He wrote the American Journal of Homeopathic Metramenica, the Hanumanian Monthly, the North American Journal of Homeopathy, and other journals, absolutely, which have received valuable articles from his pen. His also important publications hand in for the Hanumanian Monthly, uh, which have uh, around 200 pages, and a lot of comparisons have been made in the American Journal of Homeopathic Material America. So this was his uh, lectures. Thomas Skinner. Well, when we talk about higher potencies, we should not forget Thomas Skinner. After his conversion to homeopathy, students, many of them, have been converted to homeopathy. So see the impact of homeopathy during those times also how dr hanuman had got those magnificent you know uh, era where he could really attract all these important stalwarts towards homeopathy after his conversion to homeopathy thomas skinner became one of the greatest homeopaths of his time he was a high potency prescriber and of course, he invented the Skinner centesimal fluxion potentizer to make these remedies. He was awarded an honorary degree from the New uh, York. Ma'am, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yes, ma'am. Your presentation was disturbed. So can you present again once more? Okay. Can you see this ma'am now? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. It's visible, yeah. My webinar, let's see. So this was about Thomas Skinner. Can you see? Yes, it's visible, ma'am. Please continue. Yeah. Now, can you see, students, this was the basic Skinner potentizer. I told you, whenever we talk about higher potencies, this is Thomas Skinner. Because he was basically a person who really had an influential part, you know, upon higher potencies. So Skinner centesimal fluxion potentizer, he first described it in an article so in uh, Organon of Medicine, Volume 1. This machine was designed to be used over a wash basin in a doctor's office. And the water supply was attached there, provided with a motive bar. Can you see this? Whenever you get questions upon higher potency, never forget Thomas Skinner. Now we come on to the next uh, contributor, a pioneer, Dr. Finke. He began producing high potency remedies in the late 1860s, and many of his remedies are still in use. He was, of course, an accomplished musician as well, Dr. Finke. Let us see the contributions of Dr. Carol Dunham. He was from Dublin and he cured himself with lattices. He visited many homeopathic hospitals in Europe and then he went to Munster where he stayed with Dr. Boninghausen and studied the methods of that great master. He was a voluminous writer, let me tell you that. And he has written very good books on lectures on Materia Medica and homeopathy, science of therapeutics. Dr. Carol Dunham. Now, Dunham also, he had, um, like we know that Dunham remedies, uh, they were quite uh, famous. He also 
was a person who manufactured high potencies, right? So he also had a separate apparatus made for this Dunham potencies. We now go on for our next uh, contributor towards homeopathic field, and that is Dr. H. C. Allen. He was one of the guiding lights of the Hanibalian homeopathy. He wrote the keynotes of Materia Medica with nozos, Materia Medica of the nozos, along with therapeutic therapeutics of the intermittent fever, therapeutics of fever, therapeutics of tuberculosis infections. So he had great books written under his publication. These are few. Please have a look. Materia Medica of the nozos, Proofings of the X-ray. This is something very conspicuous and different in case where the provings of the X-rays were very well written by H.C. Allen. Now we have got our General Korsukov, one more pioneer for higher potencies. He prepared the homeopathic remedies. He was the first person in Russia who was a homeopath. Don't forget this. This is absolutely something different where General Korsakov, he changed his line, okay, and he credited himself with the discovery of high potencies in homeopathy. General Korsakov. Now, let me tell you in details how exactly General Korsakov of Russia developed this. He developed a notion, dear students, that one single medicated globule, when placed among many non medicated globules, they communicate its medicinal power to the non medicated globules. Now, if a third person thinks, is it possible? But yes, it was possible. One single medicated globule, when placed among many non-medicated globules, they communicate its medicinal power to the non-medicated globules. He claimed that all these globules are being medically activated and their medicinal strength was almost equal to that of the original globule. This is a very important uh, principle given by General Korsakov of Russia. We are speaking about the pioneers towards homeopathy pharmacy, and one of the best contributions was the higher potencies developed by these people. We go on for the next uh, contributor, Dr. Edward Batch. He basically was investigating the role of bacteriology in chronic disease. And his researches led him to recognize that there were clear personality types that related to the various patterns of ill health, irrespective of the physical symptoms being treated or presented by the patient. He was working with a vaccine therapy and later with homeopathic remedies as well. Now, let us see his most important contribution towards homeopathic pharmacy, that is the discovery of flower remedies. He felt that he could help to harmonize the emotional imbalances that he came to see as the real causes of physical illness. Batch flower remedies are very famous and you can see that, uh, you know, Edward Batch was the first person who contributed towards this particular faculty of batch flower remedies. These are the original batch flower remedies, which I have tried to bring in front of you so that you will have an idea how exactly the batch flower remedies were made. Alfred von Koller. Yes, you remember this when drug proving was taught to you. So not before Dr. Hahnemann, Alfred von Koller was the first person who gave the method of drug proving. It says that the proven remedies principle is Hahnemann's method of testing the effects of medicines on healthy volunteers, although Hahnemann himself credited Albert von Holler with the honor to have suggested to test the medicines on healthy. On the healthy and reasonable people, according to Dr. Hahnemann, they are considered capable of describing what they feel after having taken the remedy. And you know, this is a history. Drug proving trials on the single blind and the double blind trials were made, and still they are into existence. Now we come on for the next contributor, Dr. Shushla. He was a German physician. Students, he developed a separate healing system as a biochemy or biochem. 
like many a times these biochemical remedies are called as shushler's remedy basically it was on the principle of substitution therapy with some mineral compounds based on the physiological considerations therefore many a times if you see calcarea for 6x or ferrum for 3x these are the decibel scale potencies which are made in the lower potencies called as shushlers or biochemical remedies they are also called as 12 tissue remedies and it is written in the book which is given by dr william boring he first published it in 1888 now these Schuschler tissue salts are the micro doses of the body's 12 essential minerals. They can be used to treat common health concerns like cold, cough, fever, muscle cramp and skin problems. This is a book image which I want to show you who has been William Boric was the person who has written it. Now we come on to the recently finer of homeopathy who is now no more with us but recently he expired two years back dr p n bamasa he was an institute by himself his contributions towards homeopathic pharmacopoeia laboratory is extensive and of course he had also written down the statutory control of homeopathic medicines in the world of homeopathy all over india and abroad he has authored many books in homeopathy and especially the name is Encyclopedia of Homeopathic Pharmacopoeia. It has also got drug index. You know that these homeopathic pharmacopoeia are very important for us to take the experts and the references. He has got credit of around a dozen of books, you know, and hundreds of research papers. He has just passed away in the year 2018. Encyclopedia of Homeopathic Pharmacopoeia with a drug index, a very famous homeopathic pharmacopoeia, unofficial pharmacopoeia, Dr. Induver. Dr. Induver is one of the senior research scholars of India with homeopathic education and training in India as well as in USA. She had the opportunity, who is as a who has been working as a fellow in WHO in studying the status and contemporary techniques of homeopathic education, research, and manufacturing of its med medications. She is a research officer in charge of homeopathic pharmacopoeia laboratory of government of India. So these were some of the important pioneers. There were many, but we had constraint of time as well, students. Therefore, all of the the contributors have not been able to put forth, but still we have tried our best to put all together under one particular domain. So hope you have understood about these contributions. And I'm once again thankful to all the management, the director of the Sympathy Institute of Homeopathic Pharmacy, all team, as well as Motiwala Medical College, respected and honorable Dr. Motiwala Sir, whole management of the Department of Homeopathy Pharmacy and our management and principal, Dr. Joshi Madam, who gave us the opportunity to me for the presentation of this particular webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. R. B. Kaladarme. The you, knowledge that you have given us today was amazing and priceless. It has also given us a very deep understanding of the pioneers of homeopathy who have given us this system of medicine, this amazing system of medicine, and the contributions they have given to us. I would like to present to you our digital certificate for Thank the speaker. You. Please accept a small token of gratitude. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear students, for a patient hearing. All my students are very good. I should appreciate them. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Artima, 
please accept a token of uh, gratitude. This is for Thank you. you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you very much. I'm honored. Ma'am, a request from my side. Yes, ma'am. Can all the participants as well get the certificate of participation? Yes, definitely. We are sharing the certificate of participation to all the participants who are present here. And especially those who are registered Thank through you, their registration, we get the information and then we share to them separately. Thank you so and much. And then ma the recording of this webinar. Okay. So we YouTube channel. We have our YouTube channel. It will be uploaded very soon. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And uh, we are also sharing a feedback form for this yes. webinar. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I request all the participants, please share your feedback so that we can improve this events in the upcoming webinar. Uh, I would like to call upon Dr. R. Pansar, Director of Sympathy Institute of Homeopathic Pharmacy. And before I call on him, I would like to present a digital certificate to our coordinator for beautiful, beautifully coordinating this uh, event. I would uh, call upon Dr. Asha Boslema. And Dr. Varsha Dharne, ma'am, please accept our Dr. Varsha Dharne, ma'am, she is the head of the Homeopathic Medical College, and with her help and Dr. Asha Bosley's ma'am help. We could make this event a very grand and successful. We can see that we have lots of participants, 300 and plus participants. And we are very grateful to this institution to uh, allowing us to organize this event. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you. I would like to invite Dr. R. Kansa the director of Sympathy Institute of Homeopathic Pharmacy to say a word of thanks. Dr. Arkan, sir, over Thank you, to Dr. you. Aisha. First of all, uh, uh, I express my gratitude to all uh, speaker and uh, coordinators. Myself, Dr. Khan, director of Sympathy Institute of Homeopathic Pharmacy and Hospital. I would like to express uh, our uh, gratitude as thanks to all participants present here for showing their interest in this event. I have you uh, have joined enjoyed the information given by today's speaker, uh, Dr. Arthi Halakar, who is the uh, associate professor, uh, assistant professor in the Chinchwad Homeopathic Medical College, Pune. Uh, uh, definitely, Dr. Arti Halagdar's presentation is so nice and beautiful. Uh, presently, and uh, enlightening us uh, about the pioneers of homeopaths and uh, the contributions of the pharmacy. So, I would especially uh, say uh, thanks to Dr. Arti Halagdar. And I, I am also very thankful to the principal, uh, Dr. Motilal, uh, sir, jo, uh, who are the uh, principal of the Motilal National Homeopathic Medical College, uh, Nasik, Arastra, and uh, uh, as uh, with the with the Dr. Motilal sir, we also uh, very thankful to the Dr. Asa uh, and Dr. Uh, Varsha, who is the uh, HOD in the Homeopathic Medical College, Motilal National Homeopathic Medical College, Nasik, uh, who uh, giving us the opportunity to come before you and share with you our knowledge on homeopathic pharmaceutics. Thank you again for your coordination. We hope to collaborate again with your esteemed institution and share our work with each other. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, students. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Okay, we have come to the end of this session.
it was a very nice afternoon and we could learn so many things thank you much. thank you all thank you our uh, eminent speaker our coordinator and all the participants for staying with us for such a long time